This screencast is about how to use the new course functionality in Sage Math Cloud in order to have a collection of projects that your students have, which you can also look at. You can share um, assignments or other documents with the students, collect them, grade them, and then return the graded versions. The functionality is very new um, and will be developed further, so please give me feedback. So let's start by creating a new project. I will call it my example course. This is an example course using the new course functionality. And maybe I'll call it math XYZ. Okay, click create project. The project is now created. Now I'll click to open it. Once it opens, I will create a course object or a course file. So I click on create or import a file. If I've already created a file, then you won't see this link. Instead, click on plus new. Okay, now let's name our um, file, which will track things related to the course. By the way, you could put all of this in a subdirectory of a project if you wanted to. Um, so I'll call this example course and then click the button course. You could also name your file example course dot course. Okay, that creates a new course object or file. What you can do next is add students to the course by typing either their name to search the database of all Sage Math Cloud users or their email address. You must add students one by one currently. So let's type a name, say J O, and then hit return. There's one student, Jonathan Lee. Um, I'm using a testing server that has a restricted list of people, so you'll see more if you do that on Sage Math Cloud. So I've now added this one student. You can see his name is listed here, and there's a button Create Project. Let's search and add another student. Um, I will next add Alkluktuk uh, Askluktuk. Okay, so I'm adding this other student with a funny random name. At present, I now have two students associated with this class, but they don't have corresponding projects yet. Unfortunately, you can't simply take one of the projects that the student already has created and then make it part of the course. What you have to do is create a new project, which the student will automatically find in their list of projects and which will be associated with the course. You are the owner of this new project, not the student, which gives you a little bit of extra privileges. So let's do it. All you do is just click Create Project, and the project is created. Once you've created the project, you have a link to open the project, which I'll click on here. This opens the project in another tab inside of uh, Sage Math Cloud. And this is your student's new project. If you look under Settings, you'll see that it has kind of um, their name, and then the title of the course here, and then the description of the course, which hasn't been set yet. Also, you can click on Open Project at any point, and it reopens the same project, as you can see. Um, next, let's go to our course settings and change the title and description. So this course is called Math XYZ, and the description, this is an example course to illustrate the Sage Math Cloud course functionality. So that's our description. Um, and then it's done. Now, one interesting thing is that if you open the student's project and then click on settings, you'll notice the title has been changed. It now says Math XYZ and it has that description. So whenever you change the title or description of the course in course settings, it will automatically set the title and description properly of all of the projects associated to the course. Another thing to illustrate Notice again we have these projects, um, one of which we've created. I'll click here to create the other one. If you look under projects, you'll notice that in fact there's no project that we just made. It's not listed here. It's instead listed under hidden. These are the two projects that were just created, the ones that say math XYZ. If you go over to this project, say math XYZ, and look inside of it in settings, you'll see at the very bottom right it says that it's a hidden project. And what that means is that you will not see this project in your normal listing of projects. You have to explicitly click on the hidden tab of your list of projects in order to see each hidden project. 
You can, of course, if you want, simply click Unhide Project. And now, when you look on your normal list of projects, you'll see that project um, right here. And there it is. So this allows you to um, make sure that you don't see all of your students' projects. If you have a class with 150 students, it's annoying if they're immediately displayed in your project listing. They'll be hidden. OK. Um, next, let's create some files that we want to share with our students. They're called assignments because um, you can give them to the students, let them do stuff with them, and then collect them back, make comments on them, and then give them back the comments. However, you don't have to do all of that. Um, if you want, you can just share files with your students. Let's start by making a directory. So whenever you share things in a course, what you'll be sharing is a directory of files. So click plus new, and um, I'll start by just uh, making homework one. So I'll click folder, that makes a new folder called homework one. And in there, I'll make a very simple assignment, which I'll just call homework one. Uh, dot sage ws where you can click on sage worksheet and that will make a sage worksheet and then the question will be a uh, simple question just call it um, mark down question one what is two plus three oh, that's boring how about what is the prime factorization of 2015 something useful so hit return the question's there and the student would naturally answer it underneath here so we will save the file. What gets copied out is the saved file on disk. If you haven't saved it yet, uh, you might end up copying out an empty file. OK, let's go back to our course. And now we can search for directories. If I type home, then it lists all directories that contain home anywhere in my file system. I click on it and say add homework one. The result is now a new assignment called homework one. If I click here, it just takes me to that folder. If I click Assign, every single student, and there's two right now, their project associated to this course will get a copy of the assignment. That is, it'll get a copy, they'll get a copy of the directory homework one. Um, what happens is very efficiently in parallel, even if you have like 50 students, it will copy them all out to the students simultaneously. So they're getting copied out. And if you um, make modifications to the homework assignment and click Assign again, as long as the student hasn't started changing the file, it'll copy out the new version. Once they've started changing it, though, it won't, unless your version's newer. Anyways, be careful about clicking that, because you don't want to overwrite what students do. Um, now let's look at one of these students' projects, like this one. Go back to Files, and now there's a directory homework one that was created when we clicked Copy to the students. If you look inside of there, there's the homework assignment. And now you click on it, and so the student would be doing this. Although, of course, you can look at their project, and you can see whether or not they've opened the file. You can see as they type in real time, etc. You can help them out. You can chat with them, etc. Hi, uh, student. OK, so let's try it. So they might type factor 2015. Ah. And they see the prime factorization is 5 times 13 times 31. And so they're done. And now they should click Save. It will also autosave in about 30 seconds or so, depending on what they've configured. But it is important that it's saved to disk. And then for the other student, let's do the same thing. Click on the homework, and they have their assignment, and let's have them get it wrong. So it's uh, 17 times 3, 4, 5, just something completely silly. Um, OK, so let's go back to our course. And now let's collect the. Um, content. So when you click on grade, it shows all the folders that are collected. Nothing has been collected yet because I didn't click on collect yet. So let's click on collect. Now in parallel, it's going to copy all the files from all the students' um, directories called homework one, same name right here, back into your project into a certain subdirectory. You can see that subdirectory if you just look under files. It's called example course dash collect, and inside of there, it has a directory homework one, and inside there it has a directory for each project. Don't worry, you don't need to know the project ID to student mapping here. All you have to do is click on grade, and you'll see a list of um, each of your students and the exact moment at which you collected their assignment. And if you click on one of these links, like the first one, um, it shows you the directory that you just collected back. So then you can click on that, 
and you can grade it. And here you could type uh, something like uh, great work. Uh, there's nothing special for grading. You can assign anything at all. Um, a folder could contain any collection of files of any sort, IPython notebooks, just plain text files, code, anything. Uh, you just look at the directory and do whatever you want with it. Um, in the future, there will be functionality for, for example, automated feedback about homework problems and so on, but that's not there yet. And there's no particular place in which to put a number or anything yet. Okay, so we've now changed that file and saved it. And let's also look at the other student, Jonathan Lee. Okay, look at his, and then, oh, oh, that's crazy wrong. Um, you could even point out that 17 times 3, 4, 5, visibly not 2015. So we've recorded that. Okay, now that we've done grading, you can click on the Return Graded button. And what this will do is it will copy out all of the graded versions back to the students, not overwriting their original files, of course. So you just click there. In parallel, it copies everything out from our project to all the students. If we now look at the students' projects, you'll see that there's a directory homework one dash graded. And likewise, in the other project, there's a directory homework one dash graded. So if you call the directory that has an assignment something, then there'll be a new one created called something dash graded. So we look in there, you'll see that there's the file and it has our feedback. Likewise, over here, if you click on there and look inside, you'll see that there's the file, but with our feedback. Okay, so that's how you create um, assignments or really any collection of files. Just to illustrate that this is more general than just assignments, um, let's make a syllabus. So you have to, everything has to be a directory. Um, so we'll make a folder called syllabus. Inside of there, we'll make, um, I don't know, say a, a markdown file with the syllabus. So this is a course, um, do well, study hard, uh, get A. So it's just some information about the course. Again, we can um, search for it, syllab, so it's listed there, add syllabus. And now we can assign it up to the students. The students just see a directory syllabus that appears. We're not going to bother with collect or return graded in this case. If you now look, you'll see that in their project for this course, they have their syllabus. Um, uh, so what else? There's some settings. If you delete a student, then they just kind of disappear here. So you just click the little X to delete a student. If you go over to settings and click on show deleted students, then you'll see the deleted student again. If you click that again, then you won't see them. Notice there's no X yet for deleting an assignment but that's something I'll add. It'll work in exactly the same way as deleting or adding or showing deleted students. Um, the help is also rather spartan at the moment. One other important um, remark to make is that if you open the same, this course document in another browser, like I've done here, so in just a moment we'll see the course document open in another browser, everything is synchronized in real time. That is, you can add new students, you can create new assignments, etc., and you'll see them added. So for example, um, right now I have one student, and over here uh, I will show deleted students, and go back over here and undelete the student. And now notice he's undeleted over here as well. And if I add a new student, uh, for example, by searching for uh, oops, teach add teacher stein, it gets added, and then the student gets added. In the course where you've added them, they appear at the top because you just added them and probably want to do something with them, um, but in the synchronized one, they just appear in uh, alphabetical order. Okay, so you have nice synchronization like that. And the same goes for adding um, assignments. So for example, if we make a new folder, just something silly, and then go back over here, search, find that folder, add it, it's added, and notice that if we look over here, it's also been added. So it's available in both places. So everything is synchronized. That's really useful if, for example, you add collaborators to a course. So you may have several TAs or um, other professors that are teaching with you, and you can simply add their names here. Um, finally, just I want to close by remarking that you could kind of abuse this course functionality. If you had a whole bunch of collaborators on some sort of project, 
and you wanted them to have a whole bunch of separate projects and you wanted to share files with them, you could use this. Uh, it's not really constrained to courses. And uh, there'll probably be more general functionality like this that grows out of some of the backend stuff that was needed to implement this. Um, and that's it. It seems pretty simple, but it's actually, there's a lot of tricky stuff going on behind the scenes. Um, it should be pretty robust. I've tested it a lot. And it's uh, fairly powerful, despite appearing, I think, fairly simple. And just to summarize, what it does is allows you to add a bunch of students in a list that you can watch. For each of these students, you can create a corresponding project very easily just by clicking once. You can easily open the projects. Um, there should be a bunch of additional information out to the right of open project, and that just hasn't been implemented yet. For example, information about um, when they last opened the project and maybe what they did. Um, so you can see it's still a work in progress, but it's uh, enough. So you can open the projects. You can restrict if you want to see like only students with a given um, name. You can do that. Similarly with assignments, like you only want to see things with a given name, you can do that as well. Uh, and you can share files very easily. So I added a new student, and now when I click Assign, we'll see that that new student has the syllabus. But they don't have the other files because um, I haven't reassigned them. But I can reassign, say, Homework 1. If I click that button again, what it does is it makes sure that every student added to the class has that assignment. So if you look at Teacher Stein, refresh this, you'll notice that now Homework 1 is there. Um, however, if we look at, for example, homework one that the student did, it has not been overwritten as a result of pushing out. It just updates things that, haven't, that have uh, not been changed. All right, so hopefully that will be useful. Um, I will write up more in the help so that you can, that really describes the same thing that I just did in the screencast.